welcome back to school. Welcome to quarter four, week one. Uh, I know that things are a little different with this week being online, but I hope it's just as engaging. Uh, the faculty's trying our best to make these as you know normal as possible. And we're also really all excited to see you uh, virtually, but especially to see you on campus, hopefully the beginning or the end of this week, right, Friday. Um, so we're all really excited. Um, I hope you had a wonderful Ramadan break. Uh, I hope you're rested. I hope the break was enjoyable. And I hope you're ready to learn and engage uh, back into um, all your different subjects. Um, so let's dive right in. First of all, there's just a quick uh, reminder for your Ramadan projects, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, these were sent out to you uh, at the end of quarter three. You should have been working on these throughout the Ramadan, five weeks of Ramadan break, right? Um, and I gave you the option of working on these electronically on your computer. Um, I did recommend that you do these physically, but for those of you who ended up doing these electronically, I'll make sure to post an assignment on Google Classroom where you can submit those, um, and I'll send out an email too. Um, for those of you who did it physically in like a journal or a notebook, um, you'll be able to turn those in um, at the beginning of the first class back on campus, right? Next week, hopefully. Um, so those will be due again uh, once you return on campus, right? So for those of you who may have a few journal entries left to do, please make sure you finish those. For those of you who haven't started them, um, I still recommend that you try to get at least a few journal entries in. These will be graded uh, because you spent so much time on it, right? Okay, so let's dive right in. The first part of this lesson will just be to cover the basic structure and uh, schedule for the week. Um, um, and this lesson will be for both 10th and 12th grade uh, because it's more general information. Uh, the second part will be covering sort of the ethics of plagiarism, uh, just so that we're all on the same page in terms of academic honesty and dishonesty. Um, and I know that a couple other English teachers are also covering this topic. Um, but yeah, uh, I communicated the basic information of our English class, um, the structure and schedule uh, via an email that I sent out yesterday. There, so make sure you read that. There's a PDF document that's attached to the email which lays out this information. But I thought it would be good to just cover this again um, and me sort of walking you through it, uh, speaking you through it, right? Um, so yeah, let's, let's get into it. So this week will consist of four main components. First, there will be a pre-recorded video lesson um, part of the this week, right? So um, you should treat these just like regular class. They'll be posted at around 9 or 10 every day. Uh, so you'll watch these, and I'm trying to make these as interactive as possible. And that's why, like I mentioned in the email in that PDF document, that I'll be using Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is this online program which Riley introduced me to, which is a great, great program that allows me to sort of insert questions into these lessons. So you'll see in just a couple minutes that <clears throat> the video will pause, a question will show up, and a place to respond. If it's multiple choice, you'll just click on the right response. Uh, and if it's short answer, you'll be able to type into a box, right? Similar to like Google Forms. Um, and, and it's also, you can answer these questions also on phone, on your phones. Uh, smartphones. So if you don't have access to a computer, don't worry, you'll still be able to do these lessons uh, on, on, on your phone. And you have already clicked on this link, um, add puzzle link. So as you know, these pre-recorded lessons will be uh, shared via a link. So you'll just click on the link and you'll be directed to the proper video lesson. Um, and for our English class, we won't have synchronous online lessons. Uh, so we won't be using things like Zoom or Google Meets for our, for our video lessons. We will be for office hours, which I'll get to in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, you might be wondering what synchronous means. It's kind of an obscure word. Uh, you might not be familiar with it. So 
The first vocab word of the day is synchronous. Synchronous is an adjective. It means happening, existing, or arising at exactly the same time. An example sentence, <clears throat> these lessons will not be synchronous. The students are free to watch the video lessons when they want. So they're not synchronous because we're not meeting at the same time on Zoom, right? You'll all be watching this at slightly different times uh, and when it's convenient for you. Hopefully you watch them at a reasonable time after I post them in the morning. Um, and it's probably best if you just get into the habit of watching them once they're posted, just so you're imitating class time as, or, you know, physical class as much as possible. I think it's good to get used to that before you return on campus. But for now, <clears throat> I want you to pause this video, grab a notebook or a pen, um, and then write this word down. So I will not be posting a list of vocab words um, <clears throat> and definitions like I usually do for this week, uh, because I want you to get into the habit of writing these down. So yeah, pause, grab a notebook and pen, write the word and definition and the example sentence down. <clears throat> you will be having a vocab quiz in week two once you return to campus, so make sure you're memorizing these. Uh, all right. Okay, so you should have written that word down. Um, so the first part is pre-recorded video lessons. The second part is homework assignments, uh, which will be sent to you through a link, which will direct you to a Google Forms, right? So you'll be responding uh, to questions on Google Forms, just like the academic challenges from last quarter. Um, and the homework assignments will be directly, directly related to the content uh, in the video lessons. Um, and then readings. Uh, the readings will be a part of your homework assignment and related to the content of the video lesson. Um, and some of the homework assignments on Google Forms, you won't be able to answer if you haven't done the reading, so make sure you're doing those. There'll only be like one to two readings uh, this week, and you will not have one today. Uh, it will be a little more chill and relaxed for today. And overall, this week should be a little less intense than usual. Um, and then the fourth part is vocab, and we just did our first one. You'll have around, I'll be giving you around three to four words each day each lesson, uh, and then all those words will show up on a vocab quiz this coming uh, next week, right? Well, hopefully, once if you're back on campus. <coughs> um, okay, so now I want us to get used to this sort of question feature on Edpuzzle. So I'm going to show this question, and this question should also appear in a couple seconds on your screen where you'll be able to respond, right? So what are the four main components of this week of English sessions? Um, you'll write this down or respond to this question. The video should pause and you should have an opportunity to respond. Okay, <clears throat> now that you responded to this question, uh, let's move on. Uh, more on the structure of the week. There'll be three video lessons and three homework assignments this week in total, right? and they'll be on Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday, respectively. This is your fir first video lesson, and you'll be able to do the homework assignment after this video lesson. Um, and all video lessons, homework assignments, readings, and other any other materials will be posted on Google Classroom. You are all familiar with how to use that. We've been using that for the past two quarters. Uh, so yeah, just make sure you're checking Google Classroom on a regular basis, just so that you know everything and you're up to date on everything. And then office hours will be on Sunday and Wednesday. There'll be different times for 10th grade and 12th grade, and I'll further specify that uh, when I cover the schedule in a couple of seconds, but uh, Sunday and Wednesday will be my office hours days. And there will be different uh, times for 10th and 12th grade, just so that if, you know, a group of 10th graders come to office hours if they want to discuss the material of uh, the video lesson they are free to do so um, you know without the other students from the other class present right so the schedule for the week this is your first day sunday may 7th of english class the video lesson number one is on the ethics of plagiarism um, and 
the ho homework assignment number one will is also posted and will be due tomorrow, right, at 9 a.m. Um, so you'll have like 24 hours, a full day to complete these. Hopefully you just do it right after this video lesson uh, because you'll have a fresh memory of the content. But just like um, in class, you know, if I assign something today, it will be due tomorrow before or at the beginning of class, right? So just to mimic or to make this experience as close as possible to the classroom. So today, uh, Sunday, May 7th, you will have office hours. For 10th grade, it will be 4 to 5 p.m. I'll be providing uh, that link as well on Google Classroom. And then office hours for 12th grade will also be, um, well, will be on from 5 to 6, so right after, right? So if you're in 10th grade, uh, join me between 4 to 5. I'll be online for the whole hour, and you can just click on the link and you'll join the meeting um, on Zoom or Google Meets, I haven't decided yet, whenever. Um, and you'll just come right in. And so you could, you don't need to come at four if you don't want to, as long as it's between um, four to five for 10th grade or between five to six uh, for 12th grade. And then tomorrow, Monday, May 8th, uh, you'll first by then have submitted um, your first homework assignment, right, by 9 a.m. And then the second video lesson will be accessible at 9 a.m. Um, and then I'll also be giving you a second homework assignment that day, which is due the following day at Tuesday, on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Okay, now Tuesday, May 9th, you'll submit your homework assignment number two by 9 a.m. that day, but there will no, be no lesson. So there will be no video lesson that day. Um, just to give you some room to breathe, maybe work on other classes, work from other classes. And it'll also be a great time to finish up those Ramadan projects, uh, the journal, journal entries, right? Then Wednesday, uh, you'll, there'll be the final third video lesson. Um, and the topic is to be determined for both the second and third. Um, and they'll be different for 10th and 12th grade. That's why I didn't put it here. Um, but you'll, you'll know what the topics are shortly. Uh, and then homework assignment number three will also be available on Wednesday, which is due again, of course, the next day on Thursday at 9 a.m. Uh, and then office hours for 12th grade will be from 4 to 5, and then office hours for 10th grade will be 5 to 6. So you're just switching, right? And this is because of a scheduling conflict. I think someone else has, like, the 4 to 5 p.m. slot. Another teacher has a 4 to 5 p.m. slot uh, on Wednesday for 12th grade, so I just need to, to switch them. So just to be perfectly clear, today on Sunday, 10th grade will be from 4 to 5 and 12th grade from 5 to 6, but then on Wednesday that switches, right? 12th grade will be from 4 to 5 and 10th grade will be from 5 to 6. And then Thursday you should submit your homework by 9 a.m., and then there'll be no lesson. So again, a total of three lessons and three homework assignments. Okay, so let's get into the main part of academic honest dishonesty, right? Um, as written in the Barso Student Handbook, uh, academic dishonesty is a serious offense that can seriously jeopardize your future and academic standing. Um, academic dishonesty or plagiarism can be characterized as one of the following. Uh, but before that, I've underlined this word jeopardize, right? Jeopardize is the second vocab word, um, which is a verb. It means to expose to danger or risk, right? An example sentence, academic dishonesty is a serious offense that can seriously jeopardize your future and academic standing, right? So, it's a serious offense, and it can expose to danger your future and academic standing. So it can, your future will be exposed to danger or risk uh, if you commit academic dishonesty, right? So again, pause this now, write this down. You should have a notebook and pen by your side now, and you should write this sentence, at, uh, I mean this vocab word, definition, and sentence down. Okay. So, kinds of academic dishonesty. Oops. 
okay, kinds of academic dishonesty, um, any deliberate attempt by a student to, dis to dishonestly give, use, or obtain any information or material for any assignment, right? Um, so more specifically, another kind of academic dishonesty is submitting any work that was copied from another student. You should all be doing your own work. Uh, or submitting the same piece of work for more than one assignment, right? So for example, if you work on something for English class, you shouldn't be submitting it for history class. You should be doing your, you know, each work separately, in other words, or supplying information or work of any kind to another student with the knowledge that it may be copied or used, right? So you sh really shouldn't be giving your work to another student to copy. Every student should be doing their own work so that they have the, their own opportunity to learn the information. Uh, you might you know, think that you're helping your classmate out, but really what you're doing is denying your classmate the opportunity to learn the material for themselves, which in the long run is going to harm their ability to learn the subject matter, um, right? Um, or Another example is attempting to deceive a teacher to believe that someone else's work is your own. Um, so this will consist of plagiarism. Um, so anytime that you're using someone else's work, not just your classmates, maybe something from the internet, and you know, trying to deceive a teacher to believe that that work that you copied is your own will also be a case of academic dishonesty. Uh, and then bringing or using notes or equipment in an assessment when you have not been told such items can be used. So this includes watches, electronic translators, programmable calculators, computers and phones. For watches, computers and phones, um, you know, these things are now not allowed on campus, so this shouldn't be an issue. But anything else, even something written down, like a note, paper, you know, a a page from your notes that you bring, which isn't explicitly allowed by your teacher, will also be a case of academic dishonesty or cheating, right? And then sharing information of any kind during a test exam or even after. Let's say there's two different sections uh, that have a test. If you share any information to the other uh, to the other section, that will be a case of academic dishonesty, right? And then not properly citing a source in a paper or research project. Uh, this is something that's really important to avoid plagiarism uh, to cite, right? We've emphasized in both my 10th and 12th grade classes that you need to properly cite. Otherwise, it's the same as like stealing someone else's ideas. Um, and then using outside sources for assignments that do not require or allow, or allow research. So if you're not given explicit uh, permission to use outside sources for assignments, you shouldn't be doing that, right? And then this is more of a recent thing, right? Using any AI programs or internet programs that generates or alters writing. Uh, so this um, <clears throat> will include programs like uh, Quobot or ChatGPT or things like that that uh, writes writing for you but also alters your writing. So anything that rewords your sentences to make it more fluent, even if it's your own words originally, is considered plagiarism. And the reason for that is because you need to learn how to write properly uh, with your own ability, right? And then the appearance, the appearance of cheating or the appearance of any of the above behaviors uh, will constitute academic dishonesty. Okay, so now question two. Uh, this should show up on your screen in a couple of seconds, right? Through Edpuzzle. Which of the following is not an example of academic dishonesty? A, using a calculator on a math exam without permission from the teacher. Uh, B, helping your classmate understand a concept lear learned in class without doing their work for them. Uh, rewording information from an external source in a research project so that it is in your own words without citing it, or none of the above. So why are we so strict about plagiarism? Um, so yeah, you should have responded to this now, but to move on, um, let's talk about why we're so strict about plagiarism, right, at a Barso. So one central aspect of Abarso's mission is to nurture the academic 
intellectual, and character develop development of our students. Um, so, what do you really mean by <clears throat> nurturing academic, intellectual, and character development? Right? Nurture is like a mother nurturing her children, right? A mother growing and raising her children, right? And we're not saying at a Barca where you're mothers or fathers, but in the same way, I think uh, you're with us all the time. Um, it's a boarding school, and uh, we play, we have an enormous responsibility in um, sort of instilling in our students important values, right? So academic values, right? Academic development. So that means to be a good student, knowing how to study well, um, being timely, um, respecting, um, you know, adults, as well as your peers, as well as yourself, right? And then intellectual development, right? So this has to do with knowing how to think critically, knowing how to think about questions deeply, not just accepting things for face value, but really thinking about it. What I'm hoping to do here with this lesson is not just giving you uh, just giving you plagiarism and you know cheating is bad and you should accept it, but to really think about the reasons. Why are we telling you that pla you shouldn't commit plagiarism? Right? These are questions we hope you to question and to think about so that you can uh, develop intellectually, right? as well as character development. These are things like honesty, um, uh, fairness, right? uh, respect for your peers, um, um, treating your peers and those around you uh, fairly, uh, treating them like you would treat yourself, right? As well as tenacity, right? A core, a Barso value, right? These are three things that we hope that you develop and that we, that we hope we're helping you to develop over your career at a Barso, right? And in many ways, cheating, academic dishonesty, or plagiarism is antithetical to academic, intellectual, and character development. You might be wondering what antithetical means. Well, that's your third vocab word. Uh, antithetical is an adjective. It means being in direct opposition or directly opposite or opposed. Right? So an example sentence. Plagiarism is antithetical to academic, intellectual, and character development. In other words, plagiarism is in direct opposition to academic, intellectual, and character development. In other words, when you, committing plagiarism um, is sort of the opposite of these three things, right? It prevents you from developing academically. Why? Because you're not learning the material yourself, right? It's not your own work. Um, you may be taking another student's or another person's work for your own. It wasn't your own work that you worked hard on. It also works against intellectual development, right? If you plagiarize for every assignment, you're not learning the material. You're not learning uh, how things work. You're not learning how to write properly. You're not learning, you know, <clears throat> what you should be learning in, in these classes. And it's also, you know, opposed or prevents you from developing your character. Um, it often involves perhaps lying to a teacher that it's your own work. It often, uh, plagiarism allows you to become used to the fact of perhaps uh, getting a grade that you might not deserve, right? So, you know, if you do that over and over again, um, you just become used to getting things that you didn't work for. And hopefully at a bar, so we're developing students that really work hard for the things that you earn. Um, and, and that's really important, right? When living, especially I think once you uh, become an adult, what becomes increasingly important is this feeling, um, this confidence that where you're at, at your current stage, you worked hard to get, right? Of course, luck is involved. You'll meet people that will help you. Um, you'll have opportunities that you never thought you'd get. But 
it's important to become a person where you can confidently say, ah, this is something where I'm at now, I've worked hard for. Um, I, 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 you know, really worked hard to be in this position. So, and because of that, you're able to enjoy, you know, the things that you're blessed with. Um, and this is, I think, a really, really essential uh, component that, you know, is you, you develop that sort of character by uh, taking care to do your own work, right? Um, but importantly, you know, I think you often have to look at things like academic dishonesty and plagiarism from the long-term perspective, right? Um, of course, there's many reasons why students feel the need to uh, plagiarize or cheat. Um, and they can feel very compelling and they can feel like very strong reasons in the moment. If you don't look at the long-term perspective, you need to get this grade. If you don't get this good grade, you may not be able, your, your report card might not look so good, right? If your report card doesn't look so good, um, then, you know, you might feel that you won't get accepted to boarding school or college, right? But if you, you know, if you look at it from the long-term perspective, right? Suppose you do get an A on a paper, right? And suppose your report card looks great. And suppose you do get accepted to a university. <clears throat> it's going to be a significant issue if you don't know how to do sort of basic things, right? Like citing properly, writing well, right? And if you, if that becomes an issue in college, then though it, there's, a there's a possibility that there'll be, mm, you know, there's a possibility that it becomes a bigger issue, right? Um, where if you're caught plagiarizing again in college, it's, it's much more of a significant deal, right? Um, where it not only shows that you don't know how to write properly and cite properly, but also, um, in college, plagiarism is taken much, much more seriously, right? Where it's, it's also possible that you may be kicked out, right? And then once that's in your record, uh, it's very hard to get out of it. It's very hard to uh, get accepted to another university. So when you're looking at those sort of the long-term perspective, there's many reasons why you should avoid it. But again, here I'm... I'm the emphasis isn't to like scare you, right? It's more to understand why we insist on our students not to plagiarize, right? There might be many reasons in the immediate future to plagiarize and cheat, but when you look at the long-term perspective, not just about the consequences of what will happen if that gets caught in college, but the consequence of your academic and intellectual and character development, right? The, this is really the essence of why we ask or tell our students not to plagiarize, right? Um, okay, so now I'm going to give you the opportunity to express some of your thoughts, right? Uh, with the questions in Edpuzzle, right? So question three, what are some reasons that a student might feel compelled to plagiarize? I want you to, t to get into the mindset of someone who might commit plagiarism, right? If you commit plagiarism, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that you've done something unforgivable because there's many reasons why and often convincing reasons why someone might plagiarize. In fact, you know, when I was in eighth grade or ninth grade, I believe, I remember cheating on a math exam uh, and felt terrible after, after my teacher caught me. Um, and I remember after that incident, uh, learning and promising to myself not to cheat again. Uh, and so it happens, right? It's likely that many of your teachers have uh, cheated or plagiarized in the past, but the important thing is to learn from those experiences, right? So I want you to, t to get into the mindset of someone who would commit pl plagiarism or to cheat, right? So I want you to write a two to three sentence response. What are some reasons? Why, why would they plagiarize? Right? What might be uh, compelling them or causing them to plagiarize, right? 
Okay, so now you have your video will pause and you'll have the option to, you know, write, type in the, in, in the box. Okay, so in the previous question, um, you wrote down some reasons that a student might want to plagiarize, right? Imagine that your friend tells you that he is planning or she is planning to plagiarize for those reasons. What would you say to your friend to, to convince them not to plagiarize despite their reasons? Right? So imagine a friend comes to you and he or she is a good friend of yours and, is, and tells you, hey, look, I don't know if I'm going to pass the class if, if I don't plagiarize on this. So I think I'm planning to, right? And kind of admitting to you. What would you as a friend do? Right? How would you try to convince them not to plagiarize despite these reasons? I want you to think about that for a moment and then write a four to five sentence response, right? What would you say to them? Um, <clears throat> how might you convince them to not plagiarize? Uh, so take a moment to think and then respond. Okay, good. Now you've responded. That will be the end of the first video lesson. Uh, there will be a homework assignment attached uh, to Google Classroom. We'll post it on Google Classroom. So. Go ahead and do that uh, when you can, but make sure you submit that by the end uh, or by the beginning of the next lesson, which is tomorrow. So submit it before 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, again, um, I hope you're all doing well and I'm excited to go through this online week. I'm looking forward to seeing you all very soon. Have a wonderful day.